that's the intro. That's the whole start of the stream. <laughs> um, been working on CAD programming. Nothing really new there. Pretty standard stuff at this point for me. But I'm feeling good about this week. Uh, been plowing ahead with a little bit of... Uh, of an export pipeline, getting some more functionality put into my library and uh, seeing what I can do with that. So today will be a little more uh, checking and playing around with the export stuff that I've managed to get working and I'll just kind of go from there. So that is pretty much what I'll be doing. Nice and simple and um, that's all I really got to say. Hope everyone's doing okay. And that's all. <laughs> that's really it. Uh, what mouse do I want? I don't want to use this one. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> right, so I guess what I can show is, uh, or what I'd like to show, let's get stuff in nice order here. Okay, so what's a good uh, thing to show here? Oh, yeah, here, this is what I'll do. Um, So I'm in my forge uh, project here, source and the REPL. And I managed to clobber together a little bit of a an export pipeline for step files, which is a nice CAD um, format that is basically you can uh, open it up in all of the main part design uh, programs that exist. So like SolidWorks, Inventor, AutoCAD, I'm pretty sure has a step import. Point is it's a neutral format. It's really useful for exporting CAD data. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good thing to have if you're trying to sell CAD stuff at all uh, to to some kind of manufacturer or design team or something like that, step data is nice and important to have. Um, before I get into that though, let me just check that my stream is actually doing okay here. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, one second here. I've just got my stream open on my phone here and I'm just observing the delay of it. It's not a big deal. It looks like it's okay. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, so close that. Keep the chat opening. Oh, keep the chat open. Let's make sure that's working. Perfect. Yeah, as perfect as things can be right now. <laughs> hey, there we go. Oh. <coughs> All right, enough of that. Okay, so the basic idea here. <coughs> Excuse me. I have... Um, 
this library, SCAD CLJ. I cloned it and made some modifications, but the basics of it work just fine. So SCAD SCAD of a cube, let's do 20, 30, 40. Uh, just exports this list data structure here, a tag of what it is and the arguments basically. And then um, there's SCAD CLJ dot SCAD slash write SCAD, I believe. Oh, maybe I didn't import it. Uh, one, one second. If I, uh, I have to do two things here. So I added a namespace. So here, if I look at the code on GitHub for SCAD CLJ, basically the structure of it is like this. There's the, oh, I'm also, I'm, it might be because I'm looking at the wrong, uh, No. Okay, yeah. So this is the structure. There's the clj.model, which contains all of these functions. So circle, cube, cylinder, um, various other functions that are, that just make it, uh, that help with the completeness of the implementation for OpenSCAD. OpenSCAD, I guess, is the right way to say it. Linear extrusion. Um, that kind of extrude linear, extrude rotate, extrude curve, all those kinds of things. Anyway, they all produce structures like I just showed here. Uh, what did I mess up here? Right, so if I do, if I define A as this cube, oh boy, okay, and then I can do this, I can do um, write scad A, and it'll, bit of, it'll put out a string, and this string, if I just as a quick example, I could copy that into here and refresh that. That the new line, of course, and it produced this new result. So what's so great about that? Um, let me see if there's a nice way to. Uh, Compact this. I'm gonna try smush it into the screen here <laughs> for a minute. Uh, here. Right. So what I can do with this is, uh, let's see here. Spit. Uh, into out slash scad dot scad should be fine. Have to put uh, actual data into it, of course. Now, if I go over here, oops, what did I do? That's not what I meant to do. Okay, there, so I've got the viewer. If I do open and just point the, to the file that I just output, scad.scad. Uh, I can, uh, oh, not at all what I meant to do. Hey Mike, been a minute, how's everything going? Everything's going pretty well. How are you doing? 
Glad to see you in chat today. Uh, what did I just do? <laughs> Let's close this one. Don't save. Not sure how easy this is to follow what I'm doing, but I'll explain it a little more clearly in just a minute. So here, let me try to do, um, let's make this really small now so I can notice the difference. Oh, cool. So it actually does live refresh, which is nice. Sweet. Things are going pretty well. Just been busy trying to tie up all the loose ends at work before the holiday season, kicking into full swing. That makes complete sense. Yeah, the um, Tuesday. I think Thursday is Thanksgiving in America. Is that correct? The twenty sixth. I'm not sure actually. I have no. I have no clue. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Sometimes a bit of a scramble before holidays, right? To, you know, deal with all those little things here and there. So I understand being busy with that. I totally get it. Okay, so that's pretty nice. I mean, it's just a cube. Let's try a sphere. Sweet. Okay, so now, just out of sheer curiosity, I should actually change this. Ooh, it does work. Interesting. That's promising. Now, the thing I'm actually really curious to see if it works is this export thing here. If I do forge.export, uh, I think that's what I called it. No, SCAD to step, forge export, yeah. All right, let's see if this works. Well, not without the right number of arguments. <laughs> <coughs> right, this syntax or this behavior probably isn't the smartest, but. Wait a second, am I doing this right, by the way? That's, uh, oh, I'm not even. Let's back this up one little bit here. Right, so taking the sphere object, using this scad to step file, I want to export to uh, asdf.step. Doesn't exist in the folder. So let's see if this will actually work with the sphere and everything. And then if it does, then I have one, then I have to actually open it. Okay, so it exported a step file. And now the last thing to check here is if I can import it here asdf.step, if it's a sphere, oh, that's, that's not right, at least not yet anyway. Hmm. Let's try this again. Maybe I opened the wrong file? Oh, yeah, I did. I was out. I was in the wrong. This should be the one. Boom, there we go. And now I can delete the queue. Okay, so there we go. I've got two different CAD programs and I can use the same code to generate files that'll work in either one. 
that's pretty exciting. Uh, I think that's really powerful. And since I just made this, since I started working on it yesterday and just made initial changes to the library today, um, it doesn't, it's not nearly perfect yet, but there's basically now, there's the web views with SVG that I've been working on. There's the OpenSCAD, and now there's FreeCAD, and any CAD program with step files. It's a pretty big deal. Um, I'm very excited about that. Now there's a there is a lot to be desired with my approach here. The biggest thing is um, everything uh, up to this point here. Or how do I how do I explain this? The functions that write the files to a string here. All everything there is closure side. I could run every bit, every function there. I can run in closure and closure script. Uh, they're completely interoperable. My hacky implementation for converting to step files requires that FreeCAD is installed, which is a huge program. So it's not a it's not a light dependency. It's pretty heavy, which isn't necessarily bad. We're talking about CAD programs. Sometimes you gotta you're gonna have big CAD kernels and stuff like that. But um, it also means I cannot generate step files in a web context. I would have to have a server and a front end. You generate the SVG stuff for viewing, or or the WebGL stuff. You can view it on the front end. But then you'd have to, excuse me, request from the server a step file, which isn't bad, but I kind of want to eventually uh, have it all, all contained in closure, or as much as reasonably possible. At the very least, I do want to figure out a way to remove FreeCAD as a dependency to generate step files, but... Um, you know, in terms of walking into some company that needs to manufacture stuff and works on CAD models all the time, this approach that I have here is at least good enough to show off uh, the ideas and get useful results. So really, that's a pretty big win already. So I'm happy with that so far. A lot of stuff to improve, of course. That's always going to be true, I think, but it's useful. It's useful right out of the gate, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, looks really cool. Yeah, I, I really do think so. Now, uh, for a minute or two of um, properly showcasing credit to different things here, this this window here with the 3D view um, being updated when I update the file, that is not an idea that I came up with on my own. Um, oops, in fact, man, my windows are hopping around today, sorry about that. This here, Pharrell LM, Matthew Pharrell, he had a closure talk, uh, it's on YouTube somewhere, a while ago, a few years ago now, where he did, he made a 3D model for a keyboard he was working on. Um, using he, he made this library SCAD, SCAD CLJ and used it to interface with this program here so this part of the pipeline is not new um, what I did yesterday was clone this library and I made my own um, namespace in there that outputs not it outputs a slightly different version of the code and the reason for that is FreeCAD has an importer that imports that subset of the library. So I made some light modifications to get that part of it working. So technically, you don't even need this here at all. But as a nice quick visual inspection tool, that's pretty nice. Uh, and that idea and that base code is all from uh, Matthew Farrell. So it's not, it's not original. It, 
will be the case that the ideas in this library I'll use to create an exporter on my own and at that point I won't really be using the SCAD library at all because I already have in my forge library here I already have the notion of uh, a lot of these things um, I, what am I trying to say I have Did I even load the library here? What I'm okay. I have already, or will have, my own closure side implementations of the three D model stuff, and the idea there is I have one data structure, and then I can write converters and exporters for that. So uh, I'll basically be implementing my own version of this kind of approach, but for t today. I started messing around with a clone of this repo uh, to prove to myself that the idea will work and it totally will so that's that's that uh, the biggest thing I'm, I'm happy with is um, getting step files because that um, that's pretty much a must-have if you're ever gonna if you ever want to do programmatic CAD for any type of industry design in my opinion anyway because you don't um, for 3d models that could be 3d printed you can have a mesh file but that's kind of like that's kind of like um, only ever sending JPEGs and never sending Photoshop documents directly you know and and you you expect your art team to work in JPEG all the time that doesn't make any sense uh, I can explain that better if that's unclear <laughs> excuse me but uh, step files are a big important format okay so um, I've done some primitives onto here I kind of now I do I haven't I know it will work, but I haven't tested yet if my changes to union and difference and stuff like that actually has worked. So I'm going to actually just mess around with that now for a minute. Uh, what would be a good idea? If I do... Oh boy, SCAD cylinder. think that makes sense so the step files are kind of like the original files that can be manipulated and, and exported in other formats so devices can leverage them yeah it, it's a little bit like that um, I, I'm speaking with analogies so and there's some limit to it maybe I could uh, maybe there's a nice simple way to show uh, what I mean okay so I think I can actually show this kind of right here with this directly. So if I go file, export, um, when it comes to 3D models with um, for 3D printing and stuff like that, the file types are probably STL and I think AMF. So I'm going to save this as an STL. I forget what STL stands for, but... Um, what is happening? Uh, not sure what happened, if anything. Sorry, give me a second here. Uh, maybe I'm just impatient. Oh, it might be... It's making noise. Okay, that's, sorry, I, I will continue explaining. I just need to make sure this actually will work here. If you view, uh, let's get that editor back in here. Okay, save, no, open, no, preview, render, export as STL. There we go. I don't know why that didn't work, but okay, so 
STL file type is like JPEG in this analogy. Um, sure, I'll save it as that. And if I open that, I'm pretty sure it's in ASCII form, so it should be okay. 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 Vim scad.stl. Okay, here the basic form of an STL file, it creates instead of, um, so a sphere can be most compactly um, identified by the mathematical function that defines the surface of a sphere and its, and its set radius basically. So you can really compactly uh, describe a perfect sphere. But STL files don't need to be perfect, they need to uh, be real in some sense. So they create a mesh, uh, they, they create a mesh that fills the volume. And anytime you create a mesh, you're only approximating the true sphere, right? Just like um, a picture of something is limited in its resolution by the number of pixels that are used to build up that image. Likewise, in a 3D mesh, you have a limited set of vertices that you can use to describe the total volume of that shape. Uh, so, to bring it around, maybe, let me try to import the STL version of the sphere, and you might visually be able to see pretty quickly the difference here. All right, let's see if this works. Got to give it a minute here. Hmm. Hopefully this doesn't crash. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So I have, unfortunately, I have to hide this. Um, okay, this here is a mesh object. It's different than the uh, original sphere. And you can see it's faceted, right? It, as far as the CAD software is concerned, is not a sphere at all. It's a collection of planes in a certain sort of structure, right? So you cannot realistically, if, if I were to give someone who did not know the source of this sphere at all, and I said, you have to tell me the exact radius that was used to describe this sphere, you might not be able to get the true answer, right? Technically, you'll be able to get some close approximation and humans can make educated guesses that'll probably be right. But this is not a circle, it's a bunch of straight lines and planes. So data is lost in the sense that it's not the true shape anymore. Now if I hide the mesh um, and bring up this sphere, which is the step version. Uh, where am I looking here? Right, this version now, rendering aside, right, which in, you'll, you'll almost always end up rendering things in a faceted way, uh, but the sphere here is made up of only uh, its surface. It's not a, like it's a lossless format. All of the relevant information is still stored in there, and it, in FreeCAD you probably can't, uh, you can't do advanced feature recognition stuff, but in commercial software like SolidWorks and Inventor, I know that it can detect features and convert it back into like the native parametric forms that you can then use to make advanced changes in your model, at least more readily than you can with mesh-based models. So you can use both, but it's way 
way nicer in a CAD design context to be using the step file versions of these things. Uh, I don't. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. They're fundamentally different. Um, maybe I can show both of these. If I can. Uh, no. Nope. Transform. There. So interesting, it, or I think it's interesting. Both. So the source code that I used. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, good. Glad glad you understand that. I just think it's really cool that the source code that create that was responsible for creating both of these spheres comes from the same source. They take different paths. They take different conversion paths to get back to being visible in this particular CAD environment, and they have different properties about them now. And I just think it's really quite cool. CAD data is complex. Um, there's a lot of, in my opinion, there's a lot of problems with a lot of proprietary CAD stuff, but step files are neutral, and if you have a program that can export them, you can, uh, you can kind of do whatever you want. There, you, there's a lot of powerful stuff you can do. STL files are um, kind of like the de facto standard for 3D printed stuff. And for that use case, they're they're completely totally fine. Um, you can make really crazy shapes with really crazy mathematical formulations, and mesh it, and you get different benefits from meshed versions of things than you do boundary wrap. But for CAD and manufacturing, you almost always want to go with a boundary wrap step file stuff, and way less often do you want to go with this meshed approach. Uh, in CAD and professional CAD stuff, meshes show up as important when you're getting into um, finite element analysis and, and so like doing simulations and stress analysis and all that stuff because those then you split up a material into hopefully a nice mesh with tetrahedron parts or different mesh properties and then you Basically, you propagate like you just you just solve a matrix equation uh, for certain constraints and whatnot. Anyway, I'm totally glossing over the actual complicated details of that, but <laughs> that again is a different kind of advanced meshing stuff that STL files are. I do believe probably not the right kind of meshing, but that's a whole other use case that I'm not even going to touch at this time. Anyway. It's a long-winded blah, 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 uh, just to point out that I'm very excited that I have the uh, step export stuff. It's cool. Anyway, that's my... <laughs> Welcome to my TED talk, apparently, about 3D file formats. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, one nice thing about meshing and doing things with SCAD or SCAD, I keep pronouncing it wrong, that might keep happening. It's way faster if you're just, if you just want to get visual feedback quickly when you're making changes, like there's nothing wrong with just a quick rough meshed version, like a throw, you just throw it together quickly, render it, you can move it around. You don't need it to be the perfect step file until you're ready to export it and check that things are working okay. You kind of have different sort of, um, capabilities of viewing things and in in the ideal near future you could do all of this front front end all of the upfront design work in uh, one of my web app type things or something but for today I'm gonna just keep messing around with this because I do need to I I did only make changes pretty quickly and there might be some there might be some things that I'm not aware of with the uh, free CAD conversion and stuff like that so I'm gonna try and set up slightly more complicated exports just to see what happens anyway that was a long-winded explanation of how I'm excited <laughs>
Oh, Mike, if you're still there, um, I, I'll show this later on too, I guess, just by nature of needing to go to the washroom at some point. But I finally made <laughs> a little animation. That little animation, not sure if you managed to see that, maybe you're not there, but whatever. Uh, it'll be up later. It was a good weekend for me. Oh, super cool. Yeah, thanks. I, I'm so the the timing and looping of it needs improvement and the color does too, but the code's all there. I just need to change the the style of it. Uh, but it works now. I am very pleased with this. It's smooth, it's nice, it works pretty well. I it, it worked out nicely. <laughs> so, uh, you know, over time, I think I might have more, even more creative ideas for little overlays and stuff that I can use. That I can use that code base to, to produce. So, another another little win in my uh, in my world. Okay, so here I just want to try the difference function, which will just take the difference function just basically subtracts two solids from each other. It's really neat. Glad you're able to get it up and running like that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, you kind of prompted the in, the initial work on it, and then I just didn't finish it. <laughs> I didn't I didn't get it to a, a presentable state until until recently. So thanks thanks for the 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 idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, that finally came to fruition. It's nice to get a little uh, little check mark on those little projects, you know. Okay, cylinder. Uh, let's let's say. I forget the order of difference here. Let's do um, cylinder of ten, and the height is twenty. Scad uh, cylinder. Let's do eight twenty-two. Now, I don't know if this will work, but we'll see. Okay. Let's do... Let's see if this works. I erased what I needed. Right scat A. Oh, there we go. So that's what a difference function does. It subtracts the two solids. So you can use it to make tubes, right? Pretty straightforward there. Um, now I'm curious if this will work. I have to, let's do, uh, Forty. Yep, that works. Now to test the step export for a slightly more complicated shape. We'll see if it works. Another immediate use could be for an intro screen like stream starting soon something if you wanted to give people a chance to join up before you start coding. Yeah, that's actually um, something I see a lot of streams doing. They have like a, it's like two or three minutes where they're technically streaming, but it's just a starting soon kind of thing. That's crossed my mind as something to do. I think it'll actually make a lot of sense to do that. So it, that's a good idea. I always think that it almost doesn't matter too much right now because my audience live viewership numbers are uh, low <laughs> but to have it ready is not a bad idea and um, wouldn't be too hard to make now now that I've got it okay um, I believe now let's try to import that file
in the wrong folder here. Hopefully this is a tube. Oh, I think I, I don't know what happened. Maybe something went wrong. Hey, uh, Zertroniker, how are you? Hope you're doing well today. Um, let's actually okay. Let's try export this again. There might be errors now, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it worked. Oh, maybe it did. I'm good, supposed to be learning right now, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> I understand that. Sometimes you need a break, right? Sometimes it's easier to just relax. Well, hopefully you can get back to it when you're good and refreshed and and hopefully that goes well for you. In the meantime, glad you're here, glad you're tuned in. Glad you're uh, talking in the chat, that's nice. I always appreciate it. Okay. Okay, something's not working here. Hmm. What am I doing wrong here? Let's see. Oh, pff. well, uh, it's doing exactly what I'm telling it to. I'm just telling it to do the wrong thing. There we go. I uh, didn't didn't point it to the right bit of code now. Okay, that almost certainly didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay, so now I've got a problem. If I uh, write CSG A, hmm. Oh, I think actually this is my own fault. I think if I were to do this, spit. Write CSG A to a file out slash temp. Okay. Um, what am I trying to say here? No. Uh, I think I think these have to have spaces here because of how the parser is implemented on the um, yeah I think that's right oh that's what I'm gonna try anyway is there tronic or what um, what subjects are you supposed to be studying just uh, you don't have to share if you don't want to but I'm curious what you're uh, too lazy to study right now or, or uh, to be learning. What's this doing? Let's close that. Okay, let's have a look here. If I have a look at this, there's a few things here in the, so difference looks like it's fine. Cylinder needs a bit of work. All of these actually. See, I don't know that that's actually it though, because Sphere didn't seem to have that problem, so I'm not sure that that's it. But it's worth a try anyway. It 
it's an easy change. Might might be worth it. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I, I, I don't know that this really is the problem, but it's the only thought I have initially. Let's see. I'll learn quick enough if it actually works, right? It's not that hard. Ooh, the next thing to try is, of course, uh, transformations. That'll be important. That might be tricky. We'll see. Here we go. Another set. So one thing that's a little tricky with this, well, there's a few things going on here, but the first thing is this, this format dot CSG is, it, it's just, it's not any standard format. It's specifically for open SCAD. It's like a sub. It's like a pure subset of the SCAD format. The program, Open SCAD, reads the SCAD code. Internally converts it to this CSG form, I think, and then reads that CSG form, and produces the the output. Um, so there's no formal specification for this CSG format. There's just uh, experimenting and trying to figure it out. Um, there might be actually a grammar or something that you could extract, and then and there might be stuff there, but I don't know how useful that would be. It's a small enough set of total functions uh, that probably you can make it work pretty quickly uh, without a proper grammar, but I don't know that I really do want that to be how I actually approach it. It's better to be correct and clear instead of just kind of having all these magic strings in here, you know? But as a starting pass, it's not too bad, not initially anyway. Of course though, I kind of do have to make some assumptions as to what is going on in the CSG conversion process and kind of take a best guess and then see if it breaks. get ahead of myself either so I'm not worrying too much about it I'm just gonna see if my assumption about this was correct or if there's more fundamental issues it's very possible that there are more fundamental issues okay so with that I now need to restart the session Let's see now. Where's my buffer? See if those changes do anything useful for me. Okay. OK, 
Okay, now there's all spaces between those. Now, oh, that's not the right file. Wait, what? Oh, I, uh, I uh, inverted the, ooh, that might be a problem. Ooh, boy. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, that's, that's bad. These are malformed file names, I think, or just one malformed file. I just I totally screwed it up. <laughs> Whoops. No such file or directory. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Oh man, I feel foolish. Um, Yeah, so it's, uh, what? <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> uh, I've never run into this problem before. I don't know what to do. Let's see here. Can I do... What's going wrong? Have me on mobile so I can't read the screen. Oh, um, I mean, it's nothing immediately wrong, but this there's this um, pro function, spit, which is used to write files to the folder that you're working in. And I inverted the um, arguments. So the first thing you're supposed to do is type the file name and then the um, contents here but I put the contents as the as the file name argument which and the contents were a string so now in the folder I have these two malformed uh, file names which is the actual code <laughs> that I was trying to save into a file so I I don't know how to erase that I'm sure there's a way, or I sure hope there's a way, but I'm just embarrassed right now. That was a silly mistake. This is the right way to write that. So I try to do remove rm d this one. Ah, uh, okay, there we go. Never mind. You know, it's not nearly as big a deal as I thought. Whew, we're good. Still a silly mistake. <laughs> Still a silly mistake. I'm actually a little surprised that that didn't return an error of some kind. But apparently that was all valid characters to use as a file name, which is surprising to me. Anyway, tangent. What I need to try and figure out is if this export will work the way I want it to now. So what I do here is evaluate this. And then get back to here and do let's 
let's see if this works. Looks like it's taking longer than before, which is a good sign. All right, let's see. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Hmm. Let's go here and try to import things. There we go. Let's see what kind of errors this has. Error. I didn't get to read that. Let's clear the console here. Hmm. It did nothing. Bummer. All right, let's see. Might have to go back to the drawing board on that one. Wait a second. Let's do... Um, hmm. Okay, I would have thought that that would work. Let's have a look if I do... If I go here and do... Um, file export... Uh, what am I looking at here? This. And then I vim that. I need to be a little smarter about where I'm opening files. Um. This one's mine. <sighs> oh, it might be these gaps here, though I'm not sure that that's necessarily true. I also don't know if the order of these arguments matters. It might, it might. Otherwise it looks pretty much the same, right? Oh no, here's a mistake. R1, R2, R1, R2. Don't need those. Hmm. Okay. Let me check one thing here. Uh, did nothing, which is understandable there. Hmm. Okay, so It kind of looks like, I don't know, I'm messing things up a little bit, unfortunately. It's a little unclear. So this imported successfully, but was not a CSG file. It was a SCAD file I just renamed to CSG. So 
clearly my assumptions about the required changes aren't necessarily true. So that's uh, it's a little wrinkle. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of a strange one to me. But here's what I want to try. One final thing in the Okay, this one's my CSG out.csg. Losing track of things quickly here, unfortunately. Things get confusing quickly. Let's just get rid of those. Let's make that the only change and see if it'll import successfully now. See what I mean? Like this is we're getting really finicky with the types of changes. Oh, um, I was wrong about, it looks like you do need R1 and R2. And in almost every case, they're going to be equivalent here. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me save that. You do myself a little favor here. Let's do So let's not remove that yet. We might need it. Okay. Oy. Boy, oh boy. All right, I am for real going to be right back this time. Won't be long. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I did change that. Let's try to import things again. Oh, right, this thing, things delete weird. Okay, clear console. 
import out.csg valid internal name cylinder one. I don't understand. Okay, so that's not it. Well, that's not only it. Let's try. Let's try to add R one, R two with the same R one and R two. The other problem is, um, or another source of potential errors is. I've been writing closure so frequently that if I write lists in other programming languages, I often forget uh, commas. So <laughs> I've been spoiled by really, really simple <laughs> uh, Lisp syntax. It's a huge problem. Well, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> but it's a, it's annoying. <laughs> okay, okay, so. Those other languages just have it wrong. Commas are overrated. Man, I, so when I, I 100% in your court here, I agree completely. Uh, but when I first started learning Clojure, I thought it was the weirdest thing that you didn't have to. Like, the very first time I did it, I was amazed that the computer could figure it out automatically. And then I very quickly realized, well, wait a second, I mean, like, th th why is that hard to figure out? You know, like we, when we read a sentence, we know what a space means, right? Like you, humans can separate lists out without commas. It's easy. <laughs> commas are totally overrated, especially in a language that requires you to write lists and lists and lists and lists, <laughs> which is actually most languages. So uh, yeah, commas, Get out of here. We don't need them. Not in programming languages, anyway. <laughs> I'm not a syntax snob. If you like your commas, it's okay. I mean, the nice thing is in Lisp, in, in Clojure at least, I think it's the case. It doesn't matter. You can write commas if you want, right? Oh, what am I erasing? Here. You can, like if I do it works, it just looks like it's like a, a heinous crime to write commas. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. That's so unnatural to me. <laughs> I believe that does mean you can't um, use commas in, yeah, you can't use them in names, right? Oh, that's the wrong, that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's. Okay, so what did I learn? Basically, I think, well, Basically, if you're missing required arguments in the CSG version of a code, uh, it won't work. So if it's expecting things like R1 and R2, they have to be supplied, otherwise it won't succeed in figuring it out. That at least appears to be what's going on. Um, basically, CSG versions have to be verbose as verbose as is required. Now what I'm doing here, I I would be, I'm seeing if the white space here actually matters or not. I hope it doesn't because I don't think it should. Uh, it should be fine. So we'll try that. And we'll try to import one more time. And then we'll make those changes in, uh, in, in the little library there. Okay, so clear console import out.csg okay so the white space thing was uh, 
false lead uh, and it's as far as I can tell just related to the required arguments of the particular function so oops so that could be a bit of a pain to figure out but I have to okay so let's go over to oops let's go back to here and kind of let's compact it up a little bit again here it is nice uh, I don't know it readability of this is not actually critical because technically it's just an intermediate that I delete from the disk right away so it's only necessary to have things even a little bit readable during say debugging and then maybe have like a, a human friendly pretty print mode or something later on but I again don't want to get ahead of myself here so let's just keep it compact Oh, oops. Also, these make sense to have uh, right next to each other. Uh, render has to be like that. So when I when I port this kind of approach into my own library, I want to make how these are built up a little more consistent, and probably using a slightly different. Um, Mm, uh, data structure but I'm not decided on that yet the basic idea of this is is a good one so nothing wrong with that by the way these numbers here as defaults I figured out by just looking at an export from OpenSCAD itself and just assuming that the defaults it put in are the defaults it expects and that was my that was the end of the logic on that one and I think it makes sense okay so the next things once this works or well again I'm getting ahead of myself once I get this thing working the difference and union stuff uh, I have to try extrude linear, extrude rotate, translate, and uh, rotate because those, the last two, translate and rotate, I have a multi matrix implementation and I don't know if it's correct yet because I haven't had a chance to test it. So obviously I need to test it. Uh, I don't know why these have spaces between them there. That seems like a uh, mistake, to be honest. Convexity this, center. I guess um, it sh maybe it doesn't matter, but I'm going to keep doing it like this. Man, I've been playing um, Hades on my Switch. I, 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 that game, I'm currently obsessed with it. It's, I don't know why it popped into my head. I just, I think about it a lot <laughs> because it's fun to play. I haven't beaten it yet. I'm not that good of a gamer, so it takes some time, but uh, oh man, I'm, I'm currently really obsessed with that game. It's a pretty cool game. Yeah, I think you mentioned that. I, I brought it up once before on my stream. I think you said that before too. I uh, So I, I really like it, and like the core gameplay loop is, in my opinion, really quite nice. So the fact that I haven't beaten it yet isn't a problem at all. Like, I, it does... I keep wanting to just do one more run, you know, and oh, it it also is very satisfying. Even when you don't make it to the end, it just feels 
I think that's very fun. That's my uh, <laughs> impromptu review of Hades. I like it. <laughs> the art looks great. All of these things I'm sure are very common opinions. I'm not some genius when it comes to games or anything. I just, I like what I see. Have you beaten it yourself? I mean, in so much as you can beat it, like it's a there's a ton of stuff you can unlock even after you've made it through one run, technically. But uh, for your definition of beat, I guess would be <laughs> the question. Um, that looks good. See this setup here is like it's it is confusing even to look at it, right? Like it's just a bunch of string manipulations and string concatenations, which I mean for this small of a thing it works just fine, but it is hard to reason about when you're trying to change things a little bit. And it's also, if you look through this, this is, I should say, I should remind, is very, it's basically just some slight modifications on uh, Matt, Matthew Farrell's code here. And uh, no, not throwing shade or anything, but when you're like, there's a few different ways in which he ultimately concatenates the same lists together or he you know he checks with if in one spot and when in other spots and it's just there's just these mild inconsistencies they all end up producing valid output which is ultimately the most important thing but there's just some inconsistency and i completely understand because i'm absolutely certain that there's similar problems in the the prototype code that I've been writing so it, it's really not a I'm not slamming anyone I'm just noticing that when you're pushing strings around like this it can lead to um, mild inconsistencies where you could use the same approach in different functions and you just do it differently because it's you know on day one you do this on day two you do that and blah 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 ends up all being a little bit hard to reason about sometimes. This here is pretty easy to understand. Basically everything in here is an optional argument. So when this argument does exist, then put that string in the list. Otherwise it's it's nothing. Likewise here, because I think if you do list one, two, nil, three, I think it doesn't put the nil. Oh, it does put the nil in there. I guess there's probably I don't know. Oh, okay. When you apply string to a list, uh, it does not put nil in there. So that's probably what happens. So these could all be nil. You apply string to it at the end of the program and it all comes out fine. So that's an example where there are more arguments where that could have been done, but the approach was done a little differently in other things. Uh, this one's a little hard to read, but basically it puts lists inside lists, putting commas in everything. It's not this. It's it's a pretty light criticism, I guess, is is what I'm saying. <laughs> but you know, it does achieve a good result. Am I playing Among Us? I've actually never played that game. I've watched, I have watched a YouTube video or two of uh, people playing Among Us, but I've not, uh, I've not, I've not had a chance to play with my friends. Do you play it, uh, Zertroniker? Is it, is it? It looks fun from the videos I've seen, but I've never played it.
What about you? Do you play? Okay, I think that's good. Did I miss, what did I miss? Or did I not miss anything? Where'd difference go? I stopped paying attention. It's way down here already. Rotate. Oh, I already did take care of that. Okay. Okay. Save that. And now, the actual problem that I had was in the cylinder function here. Okay. If R... This actually has to be a little bit different. Um, actually, no, it's not that big a deal. If r, r1 equals r, actually, here, the lazy way is to do this. Copy this, put it here. If r exists, r1 equals r, R2 equals R. Okay, that now covers all the required bases, and I think that might be okay. All right, so now I've made changes, and I'm going to mess around with it a little bit, see if it does anything useful for me. Okay. Restart the session and reload the code. Uh... Forge export loaded. Let's load the namespace, def A. Okay. Now I go over here. I've got, let's remove every CSG file. Oh wait, let's stay in the output folder. Here, let's do forge.export slash scad to step of A into the file out slash ASDF. Ooh, wrong. Out slash ASDF dot step. truth with this one seems to work okay if there's an ASDF file in here that's looking promising now let's just import it to make sure that it visually is correct let's get rid of this import ASDF.step Fingers crossed. All right, there we go. Fixed another problem. Very nice, I'm happy with that. Okay. Hey, Alex, the software dev. Is that a, have, 
Did you have a different screen name before, or am I mixing you up with someone else, perhaps? I don't know, but uh, see the project is moving forward after skipping a few streams. Yeah, things are uh, things are chugging along okay. Um, I have a tendency to kind of hop around a little bit, you know, like popcorn development. Maybe a bit of a bad habit of mine, but I want to keep my mind fresh and moving and kind of keep the streams a little more interesting if I can. So sometimes it seems like things aren't moving forward. Other times it might seem like things are moving forward all over the place. But I try my best to keep things moving forward reasonably well most of the time. So <laughs> regardless of all that, glad to see you, glad to see you in the stream. Uh, thanks for joining in on the chat too. It's always fun on my end. So I appreciate that. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, sometimes I worry about uh, popping around too much, but if I don't do it at all, then I slow to a crawl as well as I might get stuck and don't know what to do next. So there's some, it feels like there's some kind of balance there. And I, maybe I just worry too much about finding my own balance, but Right now, I feel pretty good about how things are moving along. It's nice too because um, you get kind of nice, interesting visuals, right? When you're working with 3D, instead of only ever looking at lists of points like this, right, in, uh, in a REPL here, which is hard to visualize, you can, I mean, more and more I'll have actual nice interactive visuals output, which is always fun. I just enjoy that, satisfying. <laughs> So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that stuff. Feeling good about it. How are uh, things on your end? Doing any cool projects? Moving along nicely with your stuff? Just, you can share if you want. You don't have to either. I'm just trying to chat, you know. Okay, what am I, what am I doing here? Don't worry, at work people often are procrastinating with their tasks. There's some better and worse moments. Oh yeah, for sure. Things ebb and flow, right? I'm not a... Humans are not computers and not robots, so there's probably inevitably going to be a bit of that. Try to do my best though, you know? Okay, the next thing I want to try is... Um, let's do translate. Translate. Let's just do ten zero zero. No, let's do ten negative two uh, and three. That should be a noticeable move. Let's just do that. Okay, so that is valid. Let's do right SCAD SCAD slash translate of A. Okay, that's a string, so let's now spit that into. out slash scad dot scad weird name but whatever huh that didn't work oh yes it did see that it popped over here maybe if I do this if I change this yep it's maybe a little hard to see let's be a little more drastic here Okay, that works. Translate works, which is nice. Uh, on the SCAD side, I have to check on the CSG side. Let's do, let's be a little sneaky here. CSG. Making an app for managing bills at my stream just to keep me motivated. Not a lot of viewers, typical, but don't want to interrupt you. Keep going. 
Oh, if you want to chat at all, you you go ahead. I'll uh, I'll choose to read or not read as my own attention is needed. But that's cool. You do a software stream too. Maybe I'll have to check it out at some point. That's uh, not bad. I uh, I find I I tried um, I played some games on a stream a while back, and I kind of I actually didn't like it nearly as much as I enjoy streaming while I'm programming. I don't know why that is. It might be related to uh, audience interaction and stuff like that. I mean, if you're if you have zero views and you're playing a game, it's like, what do you even talk about? It's kind of hard. But if you have a small number of viewers and you're programming, you can always talk out loud about what you're thinking, what you're trying to achieve, what you're writing in the code, what you're searching for, anything like that. It's almost like you're doing um, it, you're like debugging out loud, you know, as you go. It it just feels really nice. So. I, I completely understand wanting to, like you say, uh, make an app on stream just to keep motivated. That makes complete sense to me. That's cool stuff. I like it. I uh, wish you the best. I hope it works out. And and while while I'm at it, I'll wish myself the best too. I'll be selfish. <laughs> okay, so the CSG output works at least on the SCAD side of things. Now the final little test, of course, is to um, try export this to a step file, which I can do, <laughs> I think. The classic ASDF is a perfect nothing file name. <laughs> I know people use foo and bar and stuff like that, but I like ASDF. Okay, so that seems to have worked. So what I'd like to do now is, uh, oh boy, this I'm all turnt here. When I used to work at a design, when I used to be a designer, like using SolidWorks, I had a 3D mouse. I seriously miss that thing. Those things are cool. You didn't try to play games with Twitch, but programming with Twitch helps with speaking English, not native. So no reasons to not do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that. kudos to you. That's... Uh, I, I guess you're totally right. That's going to be really good practice and oh, nice, nice stuff. That's, uh, that's always another good thing force you to verbalize. I have a hard enough time trying to verbalize things in English, my own native language. So it must be great uh, cognitive practice to, to verbalize your thoughts and also do it in a non-native language. That's nice. Yeah, streaming's fun. I like it quite a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna import that one that I changed and it should, I'm gonna leave this in here which is currently at the origin. So if I import the other one, it should be kind of offset from it if the translate worked correctly. Yes, okay. That's perfect. I mean, it looks ridiculous, but we're not going for uh, looks here. We're going for correct translation, which is really nice. Now, now I have to see. Okay, now I want to def a not a, with a translate, but with a rotate. And I want to rotate um, 90 degrees about the x-axis and 0, 0. OK, I think. So it has a rotate there. OK. 
if I do this, I'm not sure if that worked. Doesn't look like the correct rotation. So that's the CSG version. Let me do the um, SCAD version. Uh, I need to turn on axes, please. I've become confused. Oh, that's not what I want. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, where's the isometric view here? No. Okay, well, um, I know, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> sometimes things go wrong, you know? That's just how it goes. I also realize since I'm reusing A, I actually didn't want, I, I have a translate in here, so that'll change the rotation to not be around its center. So I actually wanna get rid of that. Um, so I have to go back up the history here because I overwrote, I did something a little bit foolish. Okay, here is A without any translates. So if I now export that, No. Oh, again, doing the same silly mistakes. There we go. Okay, we're at the origin. That's exactly what I want. Now, oy, oy, oy. now I'll try this rotate thing. SCAD slash rotate, rotate. Let's try, let's try 90 degrees on X like I did before and zero, zero. See, it's not 90. Why isn't it 90? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it might be. Oh, you know what? This might be a, um, let's see. I might need to do it in radians. Maybe problems with Euler angles. That could be, um, I'm, that's crossed my mind as well. I'm first gonna try um, two rad 90. Okay, good call with the Euler angles thing. It might have been that. Um, other, like if it wasn't the radians thing, I would have for sure tried uh, Euler angles stuff next. But I've got, um, I, uh, here I've got, and where are we at here? Oh man, going my eyes are going crazy here. Uh, yes, here. So I've got two different rotation matrices, uh, which I copied from this particular site here. So there's two. There's normalized matrix for rotations about the origin, where you give an angle and a vector, which indicates the. Um, 
axis to rotate around. And then there's another form which is the um, the general rotation matrix where you apply rotations in Z, Y, X order. Um, and that's the, which is equivalent to how OpenSCAD implements their rotation. So here you can see in, in this bit of code here, rotate A, AX, AY, AZ is equivalent to rotate Z, Y, X. So using this, these uh, matrices, assuming I did it correctly, um, uh, should be fine. Now my master's thesis I use quaternions to calculate this stuff because of weird problems with rotations. Okay, cat handles that. Cursed radians and degrees, yeah. <laughs> I actually, um, I was thinking like, I wish I had a more intuitive grasp on radians. I mean, I studied mechanical engineering. I know what radians are, it's no problem, but I always, my brain always goes back to the math I learned in grade school where they explained 360 degrees and all that. And that's the part that sticks more easily in my brain. Um, <laughs> and that drives me nuts a little bit. <laughs> it's also, it is weird that we use 360 to divide the circle. I mean, I believe it comes from like a long, long time ago when pi was estimated with like hexagons and I, I don't I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, it's just weird to me, but tangent. Uh, and Alex, you were saying you use quaternions in your master's thesis. Yeah, so eventually I want to have a new namespace where I do have quaternion implementations uh, because the kind of stuff that goes wrong in uh, with with Euler stuff is things like gimbal lock and whatnot, like and handling rotations in a in a user interface environment. You like you end up like if you want to rotate things around, you have to like kind of have these weird motions and whatnot. So quaternions can help a lot with important rotation things. So it's better for relational rotation. Yeah. There's, the, I, I've never implemented quaternions yet, but it's on the list of things to do. Uh, because it'd be cool to have both. Doo -doo -doo. Um, what am I doing? I was trying to, uh... oh yeah, there's different orbit styles. Anyway, I'm just fooling around, not doing anything important right now. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Quaternions one day, not today though. Oops. Okay, so it does look like both of these are working okay with their radian thing here. Uh oh, what did I do? Oh, I didn't enter it. Cool, okay, that's good, that's positive. I know the feeling a lot of streams and YouTube videos are from non-American people, so they say things like, it's X degrees Celsius. Yeah, I was taught to think in Fahrenheit, can't make the conversion easily. Yeah, I, I run into that one a lot when I talk to my American friends. I don't, I always catch myself after, right? Like I say, oh yeah, it's pretty cold outside of zero today. And then I get a, like a crazy look, right? Because zero is ridiculously cold in Fahrenheit. 
get no practice. No one here uses Celsius. Yeah, 40 degrees Celsius is very hot. <laughs> but I but you're totally right. You need like you need an experiential reference point in your brain, right? To kind of know where that's at. I um the funny thing in Canada, well, a funny thing in Canada is um we're officially we use SI units everywhere, right? So in school you learn millimeters, meters, kilometers, all that kind of stuff. If you go drive on the highway, um, speeds are kilometers an hour, um, which is all great. I personally think it's a better system to be using in the modern day. So we, I have intuition for distances and measures and stuff like that all in metric, but Colloquially, we still say things like I weigh 145 pounds or I'm 5 foot 10 or 7 foot 3 if you know pick which one of those is real <laughs> and and so in in different day-to-day -day contexts I cannot think about units the same it's super weird and seems so silly but it like the reason too we I have that in Canada is because we do a lot of business with the states and you know like if I used to work at a place that deals with metal manufacturing stuff right and so we order everything in in inch sizes um, and so you just have to get an intuition about that Zero is literally freezing and 100 is boiling for water. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be seven foot three. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm a giant. <laughs> you know what? I, I can't even say I wish I were that tall. That'd be uh, <laughs> that'd be too much for me, man. That's that there'd be a whole host of, of problems at that point, I think. <laughs> no, no, nothing that crazy. But uh, the, the funniest thing that I, I love about the imperial system is that like every fundamental unit, as much as we can, is derived from a fundamental thing, uh, measure in physics and nature, right? Like uh, the, the Planck length of a wavelength of light is, is some base. The, we use um, atomic um vibration or whatever to to set a time like like they're they're fundamental measures that we use to make units and the real and true definition of what an inch is is now in modern the modern world one inch is precisely 25.4 millimeters that is the true length of an inch which i think is so funny right that Technically speaking, the imperial system is now, in terms of length at least, is defined by the SI units, which are defined by uh, fundamental measures. I just think that's so funny. <laughs> it's just we're using really weird um, fractions and decimals instead of using, you know, base or um, like, like nice even tens and stuff like that. What a, we live in a crazy world. <laughs> Anyway, you know, it ends up not being that big a deal. You just have to be aware and careful of what units you're using in different contexts. But colloquially, sometimes it, I can't connect it in my brain. And that's why I still think in degrees <laughs> uh, in terms of angles. Long story short. <laughs> All right, so um, I have a rotation thing here. Now I have to, it works with the CSG. Now I have to export it to a step file and see if it works. Pretty standard stuff at this point. Let's uh, modify this for a minute.
Oh, I mi- Alex, sorry, I missed something you had said a little earlier there. The F-16 plane had problems with that. Near the equator, they were flipped at 180 degrees. The system calculates position in Euler degrees instead of using quaternions. That sounds like it could be a big problem. <laughs> did that like like did that cause real issues or was that like like a software thing that got sorted out? I, I don't entirely understand um, the context that you're referring to with that, Alex. Um Right. Two radians. Forty five degrees. Zero zero. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's not interesting. That's just the radian equivalent. I'm being silly. <laughs> okay. Um Let's see, what was it now? Oh yeah, let's just go back up to... They were flying upside down for a few seconds. It was a problem, (laughs) oh my goodness. I've not heard that story. That's crazy. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I mean, assuming no one was uh, injured or or anything like that. I guess yeah. If they were flying upside down. Is uh, <laughs> engineers gotta love them? Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. You know, like it. It is these stories. Like they're funny, right? If no one's hurt and all that. But it is. It does actually point out that, like, I mean, as much as is possible, if you're an engineer working on on systems that people are going to use, I think it's kind of a requirement to be as careful as you can be uh, when you're designing things that people are going to use. Because you really, I don't, I, I would assume most people don't want to cause harm to other people. And, you know doing design in a poor way if you're not careful even if you are careful it can lead to errors and stuff and that's just not great right as much as possible it's nice to be a a diligent engineer i strive for that i'm not currently engineering but i think it's important there's actually a lot of things i can do in terms of the software i'm working on to improve in that area as well. I've got a lot of work to do. Does that look like 45 degrees to you? Kinda. (laughs) Talking about being a diligent engineer and I'm eyeballing things on my screen with my hands. My goodness. That's ridiculous. Okay. Um, okay, now. So for right now, the, the mechanisms that are working, the CSG, SCAD, and STEP exports are working in the sense that it generates geometry. The precision of that geometry is, it, by visual inspection, looks about right. Um, I don't know the smartest way to do like automated tests for geometric equivalents because, I mean, that would be checking floats and everything, and it, that could be a big old problem on its own. But for right now, visual inspection is good, at least for today. Um, so I can move on to the next thing I want to try, which is uh, linear extrudes. So to do that, there's SCAD circle, which is just a 2D shape. Um, circle, radius that. If I do let's define 
here. Scad slash circle. I'm pretty sure it'll render fine um, in, yeah. So it it's just a 2D thing, but it renders it in OpenSCAD as a slightly extruded shape just uh, because there's no like, there's no 2D drawing system in, in SCAD. The intent is that anything 2D either is discarded for um, step file or pardon me for if you have a thing that's 2D and you export an STL I'm pretty sure it does not export a 3D shape I think it exports nothing all right have to get going gonna be streaming Thursday Friday like usual yeah Mike I should be uh, around the same time Thursday and Friday uh, hopefully be working on either this or using this to actually make a make a design. I want to build myself a new desk, so it might be fun to start uh, chipping away on that on Thursday, Friday. But regardless of what I'm doing, I will be streaming Thursday, Friday. So I hope you have a, a good day, a good couple of days, and maybe I'll see you back on uh, Thursday or Friday. Thanks for tuning in again, by the way. It's always nice to see see you around. So here, let's def a as scad slash extrude linear. You have both of those days off, should be able to tune in a bit longer. Take it easy. Oh man, nice Mike. Well, Sounds like you'll have a nice long weekend. Uh, have a good one there, Mike. I'll uh, see you around. Alex, you've got an explanation of a bug in the F16 software. I won't be able to check it today. Oh wait, it's a, it's a GIF. Let me see that. I don't open links on, on my stream like this, but I can open them in other windows. Whoops. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. I get it. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. It's important to keep it in mind. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I'm not designing airplanes anytime soon, but even even so, that's pretty wild. My goodness. Okay, extrude linear. It's got height. Uh, let's do a height of uh, 120. And I want to extrude um, a circle. Okay, that looks like it should work. Get rid of the rotate. We don't need that for this test. Hmm. Looks like it maybe didn't work there. Oh, hmm. Looks like I've got a problem. Try one more time. Hmm. Okay, so that didn't work. 
write CSG of A. What does that return here? Linear underscore extrude height is. Uh, okay, so I've got a bit of a goof up here in terms of the um, argument list. So I have to fix that in linear extrude. Okay, here. Height is that thing. Ah, I see. Come on here, let's load this up. Nope, this one. Export. All right. All right, let's try one more time here. Is A still deft? I don't know. Nope. Got a deaf A again. Not hard to do though, whoops. Ooh, no such namespace. Oh, I'm in the wrong namespace. There we go. Okay, that looks a little cleaner. Ooh, is it... Uh... Oh, there's still this error here. I missed one. Shoot. Uh, obviously this implementation needs work right like there's there's just inconsistencies with where things are placed and how the strings are all built up it's not consistent and this is in part due to the fact that I just am modifying someone else's library like this is a clone of a repo so you know, need to fix it up proper, but I want to make sure it works at all. So let's try again. Also being really lazy with <laughs> evaluating stuff in the REPL, I just I'm going as quick as I can, but there we go. Okay, now let's write it. What? It didn't work. I missed something. Oh man, of course. 
Ugh, silly. Okay, let's try to be a little faster with this. Restart. Okay. That looks like it might work. Let's give it a shot. Spit into the file uh, scad, sorry, out slash scad dot scad, write CSG A. Okay, now let's change the height of A. Ooh, still didn't work, I guess. Shoot, something's still a little bit off here. Well, let's go and do this. Write CSG A is something. Whoops. Oh, my bad. And write SCAD A. Okay. Heights 20, center true. go here export CSG now I'm gonna open that what's what here Height, center, convexity, scale. Oh, this is what's wrong here, or at least one thing that's wrong. Um, well, let's quickly see if it works. If I do def b is this string, but I just modify scale to be equal like that and I uh, spit oh now I can't tell shoot okay that seems to be the particular problem scale equals 1-1 one, one instead of this here, malformed value there. Okay, let's try that. One step at a time. Of course, it's right here, it's there. It just should also be there. Craziness. Craziness on my part, I'll say that. Okay. Exporters loaded. The proto namespace is loaded. A is redefed. And I can spit into this file, write CSG A. Still not working. My goodness, I am. Uh, I'm doing this the slow. <laughs> oh, it did work. This time it worked. It just took a second to refresh. Okay, that's good. That's a bit of a win. I'll take that. Ooh, looks like I don't have a ton of time left. Just a little bit, but uh, I'll take it. Um, oh. 
Okay, that's the linear extrude. Uh, um, what's good to do next? Oh, I should um, I should test this briefly, right? So if I do uh, forge dot export slash scad to step into out slash ASDF dot step uh, A. Should be like a hockey puck, yeah. Okay, that's very nice. Very, very nice, okay. Now, let's have a look at a, oh, kill that buffer. Let's go and have a quick look at extrude rotate here. Something tells me that the same mistakes might exist in here. Here, this one has that. Although maybe there is no s center. In which case this Angle 360 does need that, as does this here, right? Because otherwise it just, oh wait, does it concat, join, oh it might not. You know what, I think it might, yeah, I gotta f clean this up for readability if this becomes a real implementation. I keep saying that, but gotta keep reminding myself that it's true. Um, you know what, that might be okay. Oops. Let's see if that's good. Scad slash um, extrude rotate. I don't need to specify an angle, so I can actually just do this, scattered extrude rotate of scad slash translate, uh, and we'll translate it 100 along x, 0, 0, like that. And I want to translate what? Scad slash square? Yeah. Which can be x and y. Let's do 10 and 20. 
right? Yes. I think that's fine. Let's chess let's test that out slash scad dot scad right scad a whoops forgot a quote there okay that worked now let's um, let's redef a with a smaller radius so we can tell the difference if it works and let's just do write CSG okay that didn't work and the reason is still missing I was correct about the angle 360 thing course uh, let's see have to go bye and good luck thanks Alex I really appreciate that um, it's always great when people tune in and chat so thanks for doing that I appreciate it and also thanks for the good luck uh, good luck with your own projects as well uh, hopefully I'll see you around have a good one have a good one. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, all the best. All the best. Okay. I think this looks like it's the only problem, actually. So let's fix that. FA. Let's see if this works. Seriously, still not? Oh, there we go. It worked. Yep. Sweet. Okay, and now that just means let's do you know, uh, forge.export slash scad to step into out slash ASDF dot step and we create a it looks promising now I'll just have to test this import yes that worked as well okay things are coming along quite nicely if I do say so myself Big win. Okay. Um, I'm going to not stand much longer, but I'll be right back.
There we go. All right, so I'm not staying much longer, but I'm wondering if there is something cool I could test out yet that would be useful. Or maybe, oh boy, I, uh, come on. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, I suppose it might make sense to start sort of mapping out a, uh, an approach to interfacing um, my forge model stuff with this export pipeline. Let's see, is there anything in here that's useful already? Well, let's try polygon points. Um, Okay, so this, hmm, what's a good idea here? So I'm just trying to think about um, hmm. I don't know what I'm trying to think about. If I extrude, well here, let me Def A as a new thing now. And I'm going to start it with a thread first macro, which is a list of points. It's just going to be a triangle 000, zero, zero uh, 100, zero, zero, 100, 100, zero. And that gets piped into polygon, which gets piped into extrude. The shape is the polygon and the height is gonna be 30. Doesn't matter. Okay, so A is this map. That's the forge model that I've used. And what is the right thing to communicate here? Um, if I pull the history from that, if I do a def a h as a history of a, I think it might be malformed. It's confusing anyway. Yeah, actually this doesn't make any sense to me. Let me do Okay, so the history item from just the polygon is a call or is the function 
and the arguments. I'm trying to think if there's something clever I can do with that fact, right? Because there's a kind of a one-to-one -one relationship there. Hmm. I don't totally know what the right thing to do is yet. I have to think about it further just because it doesn't completely make sense in my brain yet. I also <clears throat> have to look at the functional representation of a polygon here. The triangle's implementation should be maybe a little bit different. Wait a second. Um, operations, unions, Two D algorithms, polygon intersection. Oh, I don't need to declare it. I could just do it here. Uh, polygon. This triangles thing here. I could. Instead of taking the triangles from a Delaunay triangulation, I could actually just clip ears of the points. And that should produce a valid triangle list. Uh oh. Polygon. Hundred zero zero one hundred one hundred zero seems wait a second. Okay, so it, it does still form one valid triangle. If I turn this into a square quad, it should give me two triangles. So let's see if that works. So zero zero hundred zero hundred hundred. Uh, this one should be something like what negative 20 120 just to give it a just a monkey wrench it a little bit what's wrong now hmm that's a shame clip ears Ah, uh, something's wrong. Okay, well, that's not something I'm going to have time to untangle. So that will be all for me for the day. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for chatting if people have been chatting. Uh, thanks for watching if you just watched. If you're watching this not live, that's cool. Thanks for that too. Um, if you want to see the channel succeed and, and grow and stuff like that, you can share it around. Uh, maybe there's people who might be interested in CAD design with programs and 3D modeling, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, see if there are people who are interested. Uh, share it around. I'd love that. That's going to be all for me today. I will be off tomorrow, but back Thursday and back Friday. So tune in then. That's all I got. I uh, hope you have a good day. Hope you have a good, if you're in America, hope you have good Thanksgiving. If you're in other countries that are having Thanksgiving, I hope that's a good time for you as well. 
and in general i just hope you're doing okay this year and this week that's all i gotta say goodbye have a good one